call the regular uh, meeting of the Common Council for the City of Hudson to order for uh, February 22nd. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Birchill? Here. District 1 Morset? Here. District 2 Ohms? Here. District 3 McCormick? No. District 4 Weber? Here. District 5 Hoggett? Here. District 6 Hall? Here. Okay. Um, we had a <laughs> okay. we had a, a notice of public hearing. Uh, Common Council of the City of Hudson hold a public hearing on Monday, February 22nd, 2016 at 6.55 p.m to invite the public comment in regard consideration of the Common Council to dispose of city park property. The property is of Burkmost Park that abuts Cooley Road between the historic Casanova Liquor, 236 uh, Cooley Road, and the adjacent residential lot of 202 Cooley Road. If you have any questions, you may call Denny Darnold, and at this point, we're open for public uh, comments. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to make a comment on this? If you could give us your name and address, please. Hi, it's Pat Colton, 405 Locust Street. And actually, I was just walking by that, that stretch the other day on my way home from the muffler shop, and I saw that little lot in there unrelated to this, but I thought that would be a perfect spot when we were just talking about needing a place for a drainage, you know, to put a uh, story or what do you, the swell or, you know, whatever, a collection basin, because I looked up and you can see that all that water is going to come down off of the hill from Burkmose Park, and if it's going to be more impervious surfaces, surfaces there, it will just run. It'll be one parking lot to another parking lot to the dairy queen and then out and down into the river. So I just think that, you know, that little bit of uh, land there would be a perfect place to put a collection holding tank to collect that water before it goes to the river. And the second thing is that when I read it in the, the the, uh, whatever I printed off yesterday from the, the agenda thing, and it said that that was given as a gift, you know, given as a gift for the city to keep. And I just feel like even if there's some legal way to get out of it, that wasn't the intention of whoever gave it. You know, they gave it to the city with the, with the agreement that the city would keep it, and I think they should. But I think that that would be a good purpose for it. Thank you, Ms. Colton. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on this? Mr. Darnold, did you have anything on the public part? Just Yeah, okay. Okay. I'll ask one more time if there's anyone that has public comment. If not, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. <coughs> First order of business tonight is any comments or suggestions from citizens present on any issue that is not on the agenda. So now is your chance to come forward and uh, speak to the council on any item that is not on the agenda that you'd like to speak to the council on. So if there's anyone here, please come forward. I'll ask one more time if there's anyone here that would like to speak to the council on any items that are not on the agenda, please come forward. Yes. You could give us your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Mike Ferguson. I live at uh, 811 Vine Street. Uh huh. Kind of embarrassed to say this, but I'm not sure if it's on the agenda. I wanted to speak about the proposed bike path on Vine Street. It is on the agenda tonight. Okay. So I'll yep. speak at that time. Yep, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. One last time. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> discussion and possible action on consent agendas. Madam Clerk. To approve the regular session meeting minutes of February 8, 2016, to approve claims for payment in the amount of $416,923.17. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city and successful completion of the background check, to approve the issuance of six regular operator's license for the period February 23rd, 2016, 
to June 30, 2017 to Samantha Hiller, Tyra Gustafson, Nathan Rowan, Emma Caudy, Stephanie Nelson, and Ty Davis to approve the request for an agent change to Ernest Betker at the Wine Station Hudson LLC doing business as Negret Wine Company, 310 Second Street, Hudson, Wisconsin for the license year ending June 30th, 2016, contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city and surrender of the current liquor license. To approve um, per Dunn Brothers Coffee request two 15 minute parking spaces on the south side of Locust Street, west of 2nd Street from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and to revisit this in six months. To approve the Halos of Hudson 5K Run Walk event. To approve the Hudson School of Gymnastics Color Dash event. To approve the Yellowstone Trail event held June 11th and 12th, 2016 and designated as a community event. To approve the Riverfest 2016 event held on July 10th through the 21st, 2016 and designated as a community event. To approve the Utility Commission report and minutes. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. Is there a second? <clears throat> I'll second. Discussion? Roll call. Um, Hoggett? Yes. Hall? Yes. Weber? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Morset? Yes. Thank you. Uh, item seven, presenta uh, presentation and pre-sale report by Sean Lentz from Ellers and Associates regarding possible bond for Vine Street. Sean? Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, does everyone have the pre-sale report in their packets? Yeah, uh, I sent that over to Devin. I'll uh, go through the report for the preliminary finance plan for the Vine Street project for this year. Uh, as I go through that, if any of the council members have questions, please feel free to stop me and we'll, we'll take those as we move through the uh, material. Where I'd like to start out is if uh, you can go through the text portion of the report back to Exhibit 1. Executive summary, or do you want to go further? Uh, a little bit further back, okay. Mayor. Uh, it would be this one here is that I, I was okay. referencing to. Uh, exhibit one is the preliminary sizing of the bond issue to pay for the Vine Street project. Uh, the issue is projected to be in the amount of three million one hundred and ten thousand. And if you look at the top of the page of Exhibit One, you'll see the repayment period over a twenty years, which is the maximum period for uh, repaying a debt issue like this. And it also is important to match up the repayment schedule with the useful life of the, uh, the asset that the city would be financing, in this case, the uh, Vine Street. You'll notice the payments are expected to be in and around 200 to 210,000 in total each year. And for preliminary purposes, uh, we've done an interest rate projection at about a quarter of 1% above what we're seeing in the market currently. The plan is to have this sale at the city's second meeting in uh, March, so about a month out from now. Then on the right side of the page, you'll see four columns in color, uh, and they're entitled tax levy, sewer, storm sewer, and water. For the repayment of this issue over the next 20 years, uh, the tax levy column in purple, which is about 75000 and the storm sewer column in six, about 60000 a year, those will be part of the annual debt levy that's a part of your general fund budget. And then you'll also see columns, one in green for the sewer utility and one in blue for the water utility. Those columns are expected to be repaid with revenues from the sewer utility operation and the water utility operation. So the, the exhibit is to give you extent it is how the issue will be repaid then over the, the next 20 years. Okay. Now if you can go to exhibit two, wanted to give the council a sense as to how this new issue will fit into the overall debt that is a part of your general fund budget each year. So exhibit two, the blue bars are representative of the existing debt prior to considering this Vine Street project. And then the green bars are the uh, addition 
of the Vine Street principal and interest payments on top of or in addition to the city's existing debt you have. What I'd highlight on this is, as you look at this, the next couple years uh, with adding this debt on top of the existing debt, expect the overall debt levy to go up slightly to about that uh, 140,000 in excess of where we are currently. But then as we start getting to 2019 and then especially beyond, the overall city debt, so all of the principal and interest payments on all the general obligation debt outstanding for the city is scheduled to start falling off significantly at that point. So uh, next couple years, payments should stay in and around about the same level, uh, but then going forward, a lot of the existing debt is been, being fully repaid uh, and it provides either the possibility that the debt levy would be reduced or in the event that the city has future needs, uh, there's some capacity there to stay at approximately the same level uh, that you currently are, but be able to handle other capital projects that might come up for the council. Okay. Also on exhibit three, if everyone can turn the page over, one of the other uh, numbers that I like to update for the council the state does limit the ability to use general obligation debt like we're talking about for financing Vine Street. Uh, there is a limit on how much you can use this tool and it is the lowest cost and most flexible borrowing tool that you have as a city. The, the restriction is uh, to 5% of the equalized value of the entire uh, area of city, the city of Hudson. And big picture on this, the red line is representative of that capacity, uh, which is uh, well over 80 million for the city. And if you look at the bottom, uh, the city has less than 20 million in debt, including the new issue outstanding. So you've used this tool very conservatively in the past, and I think we've talked about that with the council. So certainly you're still well below uh, the maximum that the state allows. And you're also well below most communities in terms of the percentage of this general obligation borrowing capacity that you have used. And we want to keep it that way. It's well, and that's a, that's a real good segue into my, my next, uh, next and last point for the council before moving uh, to the resolutions that start the process. And that's the uh, timeline. If you can go back a uh, couple of pages, it would be page three and the page numbers are in the lower, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, page three. Oh, I take that back, sorry about that. Uh, page five, which is the proposed debt schedule. Uh, this evening is the pre-sale review with the council to get any questions or feedback. Also, uh, there are some initial resolutions to, start, to follow the statutory process for issuing the debt that you are a bond council, Eckbert and Lammers has put together. Uh, those are uh, for review and approval this evening. From there, uh, the next step, and that going back to the point Randy made about your borrowing capacity, we will also be looking into and renewing the city's bond rating. And Hudson has an extremely good rating currently. You're at the AA2 level. AAA is the best, then there's AA1, and AA2 is where the city currently resides. Again, a, a very, very solid, very good rating. Uh, we'll be going through the process with Moody's Investor Service of renewing that and updating that rating. Uh, John, fact when is that? Sure. We haven't set a date. We haven't set a date. Yeah, we haven't set a, a final Did date. Did we just get an email from them? We got the saying that they had reviewed it at the end of last year and there was no change, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, but we will be setting that, should be in the early part of March, that we'll set that. At, and some of the factors they look at are how much of your borrowing capacity you've used, where the, the savings or fund balance of the, of the city is currently at. So the city has done a really good job of managing that in the, fact, in the past, and I expect that that will continue into the future. The, the benefit of doing those, uh, doing those steps to maintain the good rating is lower interest rates. That, that's why you do it, just to have the lowest borrowing cost uh, available to you. So uh, I'm optimistic that we'll be uh, at that, could maintain that very high rating of the AA2. From there then, what we expect to do is take competitive bids with that uh, hopefully updated rating on the morning of March 21st. And then the evening of March 21st, we would be back before the council to, to discuss the results of the sale. 
and at that point you would have a final sale resolution to accept the bids and lock into the final rates and terms at that point. But uh, again, going back to this evening, uh, Mayor, this evening's activity for the council, again, review of the presale, any questions or thoughts, uh, happy to try to answer those. And then I think you've got a couple of resolutions that start the process, uh, again, that the bond council has put together. Just one comment. There's not, there's a very, un, it's very unlikely that we're going to increase our rating. Would that be a fair statement? Hi. Yeah, one of the, there, there's a lot of criteria. Uh, one of the main uh, difficulties at this point is just the raw size of the city, right? Uh, and most of the, the communities that are in the AA1 or AAA tend to have a, a, a larger tax base. Uh, certainly not an impossibility in the future. A lot of the other factors that are under the control of the city as I'd mentioned, you've done a, an excellent job of, of uh, maintaining and managing, but that, that's one of the big ones right now in terms of trying to jump up to that AA1. So level. if you think we're gonna get a better rate, I think this is what it's gonna be. Yeah. So. Yep. And it's very good. Yep, and it's yep. very good, yep. Any other questions for Sean? I'll move we suspend the rules. Okay. Second. Roll call. Morstead? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Hall? Yes. Weber? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Move to adopt resolution 4-16. Okay. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We don't have to, we're still in, uh, we suspend the rules or do we have to do for no, each one? No, you should do it for every resolution. Okay. <clears throat> Next item is resolution 5-16, directing public Publication of notice to electors. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Hoggett? Yes. Weber? Yes. Hall? Yes. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Is there a motion to approve Resolution 5-16? I'll move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a motion to suspend the rules for resolution 6-16? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Weber? Yes. Hall? Yes. Alms? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Move to approve resolution 6-16. I'll second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Planning Commission, next item on the agenda, discussion and possible action on a certified survey map, CSM for two commercial lots, 1.782 acres, for a proposal 125, 155, 175 Second Street South, and 1.609 acres for 201 Second Street, Michael Leverty, MLME Holdings. Mr. Darnold. Good evening. Planning Commission recommends approval of the proposed certified survey map creating two lots. <clears throat> Excuse me. The two lots in question are uh, the existing lot for, or the existing parcels for the, mutual, the Northwest Mutual Building. So that's lot two. Lot one will be the proposed uh, commercial development, which is uh, at issue, was requested to go back to Planning Commission by the developer. And it'll be reviewed next, uh, this Thursday night again. <clears throat> so Planning Commission recommends the proposed two lots and one outlot. The outlot is a common space for the joint access off of State Trunk Highway 35, 2nd Street. Um, certified survey map proposed by MLME Holdings, LLC. Michael Leverty, Mr. Leverty is here tonight if you have any questions of him, or if you have any questions of me, I'd be pleased to answer. Any questions, comments? What's the access going to look like there? Is there like one, is there a frontage there? Or is it well, is the access will essentially stay the same. However, at the last Planning Commission meeting, the recommendation from Planning Commission to approve that project was to restrict the access to right out only for the exit. So uh, it's not so much a question of right out only, but how the right out only issue would be implemented. And that's reasons going back to Planning Commission for rediscussion. 
So, uh, but yes, it's uh, uh, one building will be the initial phase of that particular project. Move we approve certified survey map. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item, Dana, any discussion, possible action, on a request by Tyrell and Jennifer Gapper, Gapper to acquire park property between 236 Cooley Road and 202 Cooley Road. And the Gaffers have uh, requested, and there was a letter in your packets tonight, uh, requested that the city consider uh, selling um, a, a small area of, of Berkmose Park located between the historic Casanova Liquor uh, Store and the residence at 202 Cooley Road. The area is approximately 50 feet wide by 75 feet deep. Um, as Ms. Colton mentioned in the public hearing, uh, Berkmose Park was uh, uh, deeded through gifts uh, to the city of Hudson for use as in perpetuity. Uh, now his gift was uh, made to the city 90 years ago. There is a provision which um, uh, Council uh, Kathy McKittrick may want to dis uh, uh, discuss with you, but there is a procedure in in state statute to allow cities to go through a process to uh, dispose of property that has been gifted. And so if the city wants to consider uh, potentially disposing of the uh, property, then we would likely have to go through that process. The Planning Commission and Park Board both have recommended uh, the potential disposal of the property um, with the condition that the gaffers uh, would pay for uh, the cost of going through the procedure of disposing of the property if the common council choose to go through that procedure. Again, the property is gifted in perpetuity, so it's really up to the council where you want to uh, consider that. Um, that decision wouldn't necessarily have to be made tonight. Uh, we have not fully negotiated uh, with the gaffers price of the property, conditions of sale, those types of things, so that issue is not disposed of or uh, taken care of uh, as of yet. However, if the Common Council uh, would choose to not uh, dispose of the property because of the condition of the uh, gift, then the issue would be resolved tonight. We would not dispose of the property. Thoughts, comments? As a safety chairman, I like the fact of moving and putting more parking on there off of Cooley Road, so I'd strongly recommend that we, we approve the deposition of this property, and I'll move to do so. Is there a second? I'll second. Catherine. Did you want me to? Yes. There is a provision in state statutes whereby you, the procedure is basically if the donor or heirs are unknown or cannot be found and the city does um, come to a point where they are have an agreement to sell the property and want to dispose of it, you would need to apply to circuit court. You need to adopt a resolution um, and then it goes before the court. The city did this one other time when they were getting rid of or vacating park property that was within a subdivision. In that situation, we were able to get the release from the donor, um, but it had to go through a similar process. So that would be the process. Um, I don't recall there being any hearing on the matter. Uh, certainly the judge could requ uh, you know, order that, but in the last procedure, if the council resolves that this is in the best interest of the council, it, it was approved. But, you know, obviously, but you have to go through and get a judge to release that, that condition. So any purchase agreement, if you decide to move forward, would need to be conditional on that. Any idea of the cost? Um, not really. I've got, I mean, I've, I've basically got the petition and a resolution from the last time we did that, it would need to be adjusted somewhat. I think there would probably, I don't know who the donor was, if there's any family or, you know, we'd need to go through some process just to 
show the court that they're either unknown or we haven't been able to find them. And, but it's, it's not likely to be a litigated situation. Okay. Well, if we kept the property, what would we do with it? Because it's such a small piece of property and uh, it's situated <laughs> right in the middle of somebody's business property. Is what well, that, that's essentially the position that the Park Board and the Plant Commission took is that, that you know, the, the condition of the property, um, City really hasn't maintained it for a number of years, is between two uh, private properties. Uh, we neither Plant Commission or Park Board felt as an essential part of Berkmose Park. Um, again, any negotiations of Mr. Zuli and myself with the gaffers uh, may include a, a square foot <coughs> price for the property, plus maybe other conditions of the parking lot um, improvements and so forth that would, would be considered by the City of Hudson. Okay. I think we have a motion and a second, don't mm -hmm. we? Yep. Any other discussion or questions? Anybody have any questions? I guess, you know, may I just make one more sure. comment? If negotiations between the gaffers and the cities doesn't come to agreement, then we don't dispose of the property. Right. Mm -hmm. Would be, the, this sounds like this could take some time to go through the process of searching for errors and notification and the process will, is that going well, to create any issues on the well, we, we got to go through the process regardless. Yeah. So, right. uh, you know, when, and time's on our side, not on the gaffer's side, and <laughs> it's our property, uh, you know, so we got to go, we got to take the process as required by state statute, and whatever the timeline is has to be understood. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you, Danny. Next item is uh, from finance, discussion and possible action on 2016 community subsidies budget. I think there was uh, one change in there that had been proposed uh, from what was on your, uh, what was in your packet or on your computer and that was the Hudson Explorers uh, post be reduced to 250 and the other 250 given to the um, holiday craft party for advertising to notify people of their event. Also wanted to, uh, <coughs> I, any comments? Uh, I think everybody was here for finance or, and if you have any comments or changes that you'd like to make. And the other thing was that the city would, um, reserve the high school auditorium for Ms. Hudson pageant. Correct. With funds out of the unexpended and then Ms. Hudson would then reimburse us. For the cost that, of the auto arena. Because that, with the liability insurance cost and that type of thing. We did it for them last year as well. Comments, questions? And I did mention in finance that starting in 2017, um, state law will require us that 70%, we wouldn't be able to cap the Chamber of Commerce as we've done the last few years. 70% of whatever comes in has to go to the Chamber. Well, it has to or go to tourism. a tourism-related. Tourism right. Yes, it doesn't necessarily. No, it has to go to the tourism yeah. entity right. that the city identifies. Right, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that particular, it, any chamber or any designated tourism. It doesn't have to be a There's chamber. A, correct. There's a, a tourism commission or a tourism entity. Correct. And under the new legislation. Right. So correct. you'd have to create something or designate. Correct. I'll move we accept the recommendations with the changes stated. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Discussion, possible action on awarding a proposal for the post proposal marked sensors meter base station antennas and hd supply uh good evening um first issue that or what we're looking at is with the census meters base station antenna this is for the meters themselves um for the base stations which are uh, what we relay all the information back uh, for billing and then the antennas uh, we pro open proposals on 2416 uh, we received one proposal from HD Supply uh, at 637 Commerce Avenue here in Hudson. 
Uh, this is a five-year proposal. Um, their final, uh, the, the proposal that you lo we're looking at is uh, $1,759,300. Uh, that is over a five-year uh, time frame. So um, this did go to Utility Commission. Utility Commission unanim uh, unanimously uh, approved the, the project. So. And finance also did, so. I'll move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? Questions for Kip? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is discussion possible action to authorize utility direct. No, I'm sorry. Discussion possible action uh, proposal mark water meter replacement cross connection inspection program from Hydro Corp. Uh, the second one goes, it coincides with the first one. Uh, again, the first one was the, the purchase of the meters. The second thing that, that we're asking is the, the actual uh, replacement of meters uh, to have the company go in and actually replace them. Uh, along with that, we're also doing the cross-connection inspections, which meets the uh, EPA DNR um, guidelines that we have to set on a 20-year rotation. Uh, this is just for residential. Um, Again, we open proposals on 2416. Uh, one proposal from HydroCorp out of New Berlin, Wisconsin, a uh, five year proposal uh, for $493,890. Uh, that did go to Utility Commission with unanimous approval and, and forwarded on to you. Okay. I'll move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. So do you always estimate high and then it comes in lower and then we feel good Doesn't about it? it? I look good then, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or discussion items? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is a uh, discussion possible action to authorize the utility director to advertise for a utility operator non-certified, conduct interviews, and make recommendations to the utility commission. Uh, this is a new position that we're creating in the uh, water side of it. Um, there is uh, a few days I'm, I'm anticipating that they will be on the sewer side if, if needed and stuff like that. Uh, there is a, dob, a job description attached to the proposal. Uh, we did budget for this for 2016. Um, we do have a need for this position. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the, in the water side especially that, that we do need to get taken care of. Um, it's a non-licensed position, so there is no certification that we're requiring um, at this point. The salary range, uh, you can see on the bottom of your page there, um, it did go through Utility Commission and, and was approved there and then forwarded on to you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. So have we been able, since you've, you're have you doing both the utilities, uh, water and sewer, is there some chance for cross-training and are you able this, to? This position will actually start some of that process. Okay. Yeah, that's why I said, you know, it's, it's, it's mainly going to be, we have a lot of work in the water department yep. right now. Um, it's, so it's mainly going to be in the water department, but there is going to be the opportunities for, you know, work at the sewer plant uh, in this, you know, in the sewer system itself with the jetter and different stuff like that. So okay. this will kind of start that whole, that whole process there. All right. Because that was kind of the purpose of why we. And that's what we're aiming for. Okay. Yep. Any other questions or discussions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, discussion possible action on request of funding the USGS Willow Streams uh, gauge by the Malibu property owners. Jim Thomas is here. Um, I think everyone was here when his presentation. Do you have any questions for Mr. Thomas? Unless you would like to go through it again. <laughs> if everybody is fine with it, uh, um, I don't think there's a need. No. Does anybody have any other additional questions or comments? I move to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Second. So it's a one-time allocation of $2,000. Yes. And the only if- uh, And all the other municipalities. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, Adam F. is discussion possible action on the application of uh, Peter Foster, 
DBA DLSD, small plates and lounge, Class B fermented multi malt beverage, and Class B liquor license reserve at 212 Walnut Street and request for an extension on the timely start of business. Mr. Foster. Good evening. Pete Foster, 323 Galahead Road North. <clears throat> I am uh, the current uh, owner and operator of Barker's Barn Grill and the San Pedro Cafe here in downtown Hudson. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're requesting a uh, Class B uh, fermented malt beverage and Class B liquor license um, for our new concept, uh, Pedro's Del Este. Del Este means of the east or to the east. This building is directly to the east of San Pedro. Um, we are looking at um, doing a completely separate concept, um, something that would not compete with, with, with ourselves at San Pedro Cafe, uh, but yet um, complement uh, what we offer there. Um, ours would be different. Um, uh, we would be operating um, later into the evenings than we currently do at either restaurant, um, small plates and lounge. Uh, so the, uh, the menu um, I did, I, I believe um, the council also received a, kind of a sample menu of a, a small plates uh, tapas type concept we're looking at doing. Basically uh, kind of a, a Spanish, Latin, Cuban, uh, Caribbean fusion uh, type of concept um, that would complement what we're already serving at San Pedro Cafe, but more uh, in a small plates uh, type of uh, atmosphere, as well as um, uh, certainly a, a full bar and cocktail program, um, potential for live music uh, uh, in a very small, uh, intimate type of uh, arrangement, um, as well as uh, I mentioned at the finance committee, the, the potential for um, uh, private uh, meeting space, whether it is, um, you know, providing food and beverage services during that meeting or just strictly a meeting space. Um, uh, we believe that all of that is, um, um, is, is, is somewhat necessary downtown. We, we don't, we don't believe that there's anywhere, uh, in, uh, certainly in Hudson or the surrounding areas, um, that, um, uh, sort of meets, uh, the, the, what we're offering with this concept here. Um, but, but again, certainly later into the evenings, um, as I mentioned, midnight, one o'clock, potentially even two o'clock in the morning, closing time um, during Friday and Saturday evenings. Um, again, we're very passionate about Hudson. Uh, we grew, I grew up here, um, have been doing business here for uh, just about 20 years now, and really feel that this is, um, there, there's somewhat of a void in, in what we're offering in terms of uh, an adult type uh, lounge and small plates uh, atmosphere here um, in, in the St. Croix Valley area, so. Any questions for Mr. Foster? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. To approve. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'll okay, second you'll it. second I'll it then. Second it. Why not? Um, Gravity check. Again, currently, we, Devin, we have four licenses. Three. Three. Three, and this would be take it to two. Correct. Take it to two. And then we'll have uh, potentially one in October 1st. October, so. if, we, if our population goes up by 101. FYI. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ocean carries. Congratulations. Thank you, folks. Looks good. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, item G, discussion, possible action on filling city maintenance position. As I mentioned, at Finance Committee, Pat O'Keefe will be retiring on May 2nd. He's worked on and off for the city for about 30 years in wastewater and here as a building maintenance person here at City Hall. Um, we are recommending that you authorize myself and Tom Zuli to begin the process of um, filling the position, looking at um, the current position at the municipal building, potential um, with the Ward Avenue building that we recently purchased, whatever facility goes in there. So giving Tom and I the opportunity to fill those positions, to fill that position. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Discussion and possible action to approve the letter of engagement for engineering services for Bolt and Mink. Oops. What did I skip? Bond. Oh, the bond. Sorry. Discussion and possible action on the increase of the OWI bond amounts. Um, Judge Garrity has requested a change to the bond schedule to incorporate a statute change that has recently occurred. Move there to a motion approve. To, okay. We've got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Thanks. Discussion or questions? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Discussion possible action of letter of engagement of engineering services with Bolton and Mink for Tower Road reconstruction. Mr. Sifko, do you want to quickly talk about what this is? Um, as you know, we're looking at reconstructing a portion of Tower Road south of and adjacent to the business park. Um, we've already talked about cost participation splits with the town. There's been an agreement uh, that the town and the city have approved. What this is in front of you is a letter of engagement with Bolton Mink for the engineering services. Uh, this letter of engagement primarily is the scope and budget specific to this project. It ties this scope and budget back into a master services agreement that we already have. We, the city already has with Bolton and Mink. Um, a letter of engagement is attached. The exhibit one lays out the scope, uh, proposed schedule and fees. Uh, one thing I failed to for, uh, mention in the finance committee meeting is this letter of engagement has been reviewed by the town and the town engineer. So. Both have had a look at that and uh, have no issues with it. Is there a motion to approve? <clears throat> I just have a question for yep. you, Tom. Is the 7,600 feet the area, the road that is shared by the city and the town of Hudson, or does it include part of it that the town of Hudson? Basically, it's about 6,100 feet starting on the east side of uh, the past freeway project. I guess the past freeway project's what, 12, 13 10 years, years ago. ago so yeah. what? The, so the, basically there's two segments of the roadway, about a 6,100 and some feet. That's uh, right down the center line between the town and the city common line. And the 1,500 feet west going from that point west to uh, Cooley Trail is 100% in the town. The engineering services is for both segments of the project. And what we've uh, discussed with the town is the 6,100 foot section, which is joint ownership, so to speak, 50-50 cost participation uh, between the town and the city. And the 1,500 foot segment that is 100% in the town is going to be, we'll have to prorate, but 100% of the engineering costs, in fact, total project costs for that 1,500 feet will be 100% town. So the city will not be paying for construction or indirect costs on the 1,500 foot section that is 100% in the town. That will be in a contract or something? Well, it's pretty much been uh, in the agreement that's already been approved. Uh, there is a, an item later on in tonight's agenda. They've requested a couple minor revisions, but we can talk to those points. Uh, okay. I mean, maybe we should have had that first, but... Um, we can talk to that. They've requested a couple minor revisions in the, uh, in the agreement that both the town and the city have already uh, reviewed and, and approved. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you, Tom. Public Works Committee. Discussion, possible action on four post Mobile hoist. Essentially what this is is recommending that all bids be rejected and that the project be rebid. Do we need to act on it or? Yeah, We you need do. to formally reject all the bids. Right. I'll move to reject all the bids. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Park board. Discussion and possible action to approve the Hudson Boosters request to purchase and install batting cage at Grandview Park. Joyce, are you uh, our representative or is there someone here from Tom? Okay. Didn't see you back there, Thomas. The boosters came to the last park board meeting and requested to install and pay for a new batting cage at the Grandview Park ball fields. Um, the park board approved uh, the acceptance of the uh, batting cage and 
uh, it'll be 100% paid for by the boosters and maintained. And um, I think it's a good addition to the park. And um, we're just looking for approval to allow the boosters to install this at Grandview Park. Is this, this is a different location than the current one, correct? The one base? that's out closer to Carmichael yep. Road is actually uh, partly boosters and I think the school systems. And then this will be uh, just booster booster related. So. Okay. There, motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Anybody have any questions for Tom on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Last, next one, Tom, is a discussion possible action on the request by the Giggle Factory to operate concessions at Lakefront Park concessions for the 2016 season. Uh, this is, uh, request is for the concession stand at uh, the bathhouse in Lakefront Park. Um, last year, the uh, owners of the Giggle Factory ran it. Um, the park board reviewed um, the season and uh, proposed and made a motion to approve the Giggle Factories uh, operate to operate the concessions at Lakefront Park for the 2016 season. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Unfinished business discussion and possible action on Tower Road reconstruction agreement. Now you can come back again, Tom. <laughs> Basically, this is just a, a change in, or just a slight modification. Right. The council had already approved it at a prior meeting. but the Correct. Council. The original intergovernmental agreement was agreed, uh, or was approved by the city council. Um, and again, the biggest item in there was pretty much cost participation. There were some things about uh, who would be administrative lead, i.e. the city and the engineering and some of those things. Um, they're, it's, they're pretty much in the attached agreement. The changes were requested or amendment was requested by the town and basically we have them listed there that they would like the town engineer uh, along with myself to review final plans and specifications for both segments prior to bidding. And both segments refers to uh, your uh, question, Tom, the, the, the 6,100 foot portion and the 1,500 foot portion is the two segments we're referring to. And that they'd like to be involved with reviewing and approving any um, bid prices that result in a contract award as well as uh, any additional costs that would come up through construction by way of a change order. And staff has reviewed this, and we feel that the revisions are reasonable, being that they're a 50% partner. They just want to be able to be reviewing additional costs and the bid prices prior to the award. So with that, uh, I would recommend that this uh, council approve the amended uh, intergov intergovernmental agreement, and it is attached and has been approved by the, the town board. It's page two of uh, four, Tom. Or that on about halfway down construction affiliated costs where 100% is in there, where they pay for theirs at 100%, section 3B. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. moved to approve. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> Uh, discussion and possible action on public works recommendation regarding the the Vine Street project. Mr. Hoggett. Well, we've had a couple meetings on this, more than two. Um, at the last council meeting, we were asked to go back to public works and take another look at it, uh, get some more input. Um, we had an awkward meeting time because that's the only time the three of us could be there, but I wanted to make sure that we had full council representation. We did um, send out notice to the meeting uh, at 10 a.m. last Wednesday, and we're able to come to some other conclusions. Um, I think just to restate the issue here that we've already approved 
Vine Street in its parking format. So that's currently what's on the books. Um, but we've had a lot of feedback and we never really understood that I didn't, that's what we were voting for. And based on all these other meetings, um, we've come up with another alternative uh, configuration um, and we voted on it to bring it back to here so that all six of us could talk about it in a way that um, you can't really do at public works. So the alternative configuration is to have bike lanes uh, instead of parking. And um, the one exception to that is that I made a motion to widen um, third and between third and fourth street to 43 feet, no matter what. Um, we feel like that will be a much better parking configuration because right now, even at 36, it, it gets kind of tight in there. You got um, vehicles come down to Third Street to stop. Uh, fire vehicles that are turning right there have will have less uh, conflict to make in the corner because it's going to be wider, and the cars that are parked there, which uh, there's a lot of parking going on there, would make it generally a better um, <coughs> block to have be wider than the rest. The rest of the street is still designed to be 36 feet, so that would be a slight modification of the existing or the current plan. So we wanted to take that separate uh, uh, before we talked about the, um, the other recommendation that Jim made, and I can, I'll let Jim talk about that, but um, I don't know if we want to consider that motion up uh, first. Is that okay, Mr. Mayor? Um, because no matter what the we- Widening the street between 3rd no, and 4th, is yeah, that the first? That's the first motion, yep. There's three on the on the- uh, issue sheet here motion wide then that block to 43 feet uh, there's a second motion by Jim to uh, rescind his previous motion because we all it all had stopped at 4th Street which we all realize is a bad idea and then a, a final motion by Jim to um, have us consider the the bike lane configuration um, question that the street is 36 we're going to take 10 feet of it parts of it are 31 feet Feet, which are going to 36 and then on that section we'll be taking 36 to go another I can do the math uh, seven feet to make it 43 okay. feet wide but the and for Jim's one block. motion at the bottom is that we have two five-foot bike lanes on each side of the road right yes. so that's 10 feet of the 31 feet so we'll have no 36 feet 36 it, feet excuse me it, the numbers work to make up it would have if we did approve a bike lane concept, which we'll talk about that, yep. that would still allow us to have the parking and a bike lane next to it uh, on, on that block. I'm talking about the whole thing. It says from 3rd to 9th Street, five foot bike lanes on both sides. That's the other motion. Right. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. What's the... Uh, What's your, what's your thoughts, folks? What are you asking from us for right now? The first thing I'm asking is to widen between 3rd and 4th Street on Vine Street to 43 feet. So parking will be on the north side and it will be a better parking configuration than it currently is now because it gets, again, for safety, for emergency vehicles, plus also it's just better access for the people that park there and use the church and Edward Jones and that kind of thing. So I think it's a, a better parking scenario that currently exists. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion to that effect. Well, I'd like to hear from Mr. Sifko about that, see what the cost is, and if okay. it's an engineering. Oh, I'm sorry. He had already uh, given us an estimate, but if, do you want to comment on that, motion. Tom? Yeah, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. What was the motion? Motion to, the, from my understanding, to recommend a 43-foot widening of the street section between 3rd and 4th Street to accommodate parking on the north side at the additional cost of between fifteen and seventeen thousand dollars. That that is correct. Okay. Pretty much what it says right there. Okay. Yeah. I've read it. No, so yeah, that's cool. Pretty sharp on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas. Uh, one thing that should be revised is the cost estimate. Okay. We went out there uh, the last few days. The boulevard on the north side of the road between the existing concrete curb and the existing sidewalk is a little bit more narrow than we thought. Net result is to move that curb back to allow parking on the north side of the existing curb, 
we have to remove the entire block of remove and replace the concrete sidewalk. So that 15 to 17 is now somewhere in the 30 to 32,000 range. Okay. Uh, there just wasn't enough room to do that um, in the existing scenario. So our assessment policy means then that the folks there are going to get 50% of the sidewalk and 50% of the curb? Is that how we do it? Well, the current policy says 50% uh, of the sidewalk is assessed. So if we have to replace the entire sidewalk, the business owners, the church, are going to have to pay 50% of the sidewalk, which they normally wouldn't pay under this proposal? Uh, yes. Okay. With that, I have to maybe throw out one more piece of information is we've already scheduled a public hearing and the assessment role, uh, preliminary assessment role, which is part of that, has already gone out. It did not include an additional 30000 of which part of that potentially fits into that assessment item you're referring to right now, the sidewalk. So will that delay the project? We'd have to have, uh, a, public hearing, have, to have a second public hearing. Public on hearing, it. no, we could. I suppose have a. Revise the assessment role. Okay. What's that? Catherine? I suppose we You'd could have to cancel. Revise the assessment role. It... You could revise it at the public hearing. That's what Catherine's saying. Well, I suppose we could get no. it out prior to. No, I You'd think you should give notice. Yeah. Give a new re new assessment role and a new. How much time is that going to take? What's the time? Is it a class? What's well, it's a the class time one notice the class on the one. on the newspaper. So there will be an article or excuse me an advertisement with has to be. Uh, 10 days prior to March 7th. That will happen Thursday, which would be 12 days prior to March 7th. I'm not sure, maybe this is a question for you, if we get a revised rollout prior to that meeting, I think that fits the statute. I do not believe the preliminary roll has to be out 10 days earlier. I believe yeah, I don't that. Know. Okay. So then I, we could pot potentially revise the roll prior to and get it out prior to the public hearing scheduled for March 7th. And I assume that motion would go with another motion to change the current design to include bike paths. So I'm assuming that goes hand in hand. No, I want it to be separate. I want it to be considered by itself. So even if we built the current plan you want that block widened independently as an independent Well, this way. is, of course, prior to knowing that you had to take out the entire sidewalk and delay the project. So I, I didn't know that. Uh, when you had last given us an estimate, it was fifteen dollars to $17,000, which is fine. I, and I appreciate the update, um, okay. but I didn't know that at the time. Would the extra seven feet be taken half on the north and half on the south or no, all of it on the north? It could be all on the north. Okay was the original notion. But so with the change, do you want to withdraw your motion or not? <laughs> you know, we could ask people, but it seems like a lot of money to spend on a sidewalk that if they don't want it, it's going to eat into their front yard pretty good too, I'd imagine. Yeah. I don't know. What's the, what's the uh, thought of the council? You want a public comment again? You know what? I'm going to withdraw my motion. Okay. Okay. Make it easy. Okay. So then we're back to th 36 feet wide there. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that one's gone. So then we've got the motion by Jim, or Jim, Mr. Weber, I, I guess I can call you Jim, uh, seconded by John to recommend elimination of parking on both sides of Vine Street between 4th and 9th Street for a two year trial period and to recommend painting a five foot white lane on both sides of Vine Street from 3rd to 9th. Street. There's a small problem in here in that it won't be wide enough to accommodate parking and bike lanes unless we go that route. Between third and fourth, you're talking That's about. That's right, yep. You got public comment on this? Don't know yet. I'll ask the council. Do we want to have public comment again? I'll, uh, I'll defer to whatever you guys want to do. Everybody's sure. real excited about this. Well, why don't you go through your... We, we wanted to bring it here so everyone understood what the alternative yep. plan would be. So, yep. Jim, why don't you go ahead and just... Okay. I think the uh, it, it is now more difficult. If we do not move that parking over, it's more difficult to have the 
the bike lanes down to Third Third Street, which is a, a stop stop traffic stop location is a good good place to transition from bike lanes to whatever the the process is going to be. So that makes it more difficult. Doesn't make it impossible. Uh, it'll try, it'll take a little more signage and a little more to uh, to create the same situation. <coughs> For example, one of the ways to do that is to move to what's called Cheryl's. And it, there's a, I, have, I, I don't have it with me, a publication by the DOT describing Cheryl's and how they're used. And basically what it means is bikes and cars share the road. And it's special signage that you paint on the road and as well have signs. So we just have to do that a block earlier. So I would think my motion would no longer include uh, bike lanes down to to uh, Third Street. It would have to be bike lanes down to Fourth, and then transition to another method in the bike lanes there, and then transition to uh, Cheryl's or perhaps something that we, we we'd have to do. We can do some more research and get some um, get the right opinions in in here. People who have experiences who have done this kind of design. So, so my motion would would just really is no longer the same okay. with this it's contingent really on the uh, resolving the parking okay all right so if we don't have any action we're going to build the road as we've approved in november so we have there are more than 50 percent of the people that are interested in trying bike lanes for we have some people that have provided some information. Um, we've had other people that uh, want to talk about parking as well. So that's why I kind of told everyone that this is their last round to, to do that. So public comment, I guess, would be welcome. At, you know, for everybody else, okay with that? Let's let's get everybody the opportunity. Sure. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's uh, two minutes each. Mm. Yep. Uh, I think I'll start this time. Two minutes. Okay. We're going to try and so we here. get every. Okay. Excuse me. So we get everybody a chance to uh, express themselves. So uh, go ahead if you can state your name and address, please. Okay. My name is Pat Colton, 405 Locust Street. I have property owner at 804 Vine Street, where I have rental property. And I've stated from the beginning, I need my parking. People need to be able to get their furniture in and out. I have people coming and going during the year. I also, there was no consideration or warning given to anyone downtown. And I've got list here. I just went briefly, but I've got on my list of downtown owners that are extremely upset with Mr. Weber's motion here to get rid of our parking sign. So I made two copies of this. I also after I had no idea that that motion was made to take away the parking. And when I discovered it over the weekend of fourth or Valentine's Day, I started going up the street on Vine Street. And my motion was now that the street is widening or my, my uh, what I had petitioned to sign is let's make it year round parking on Vine Street going up the street one side because now it's five feet wider. It'll give parking more parking for downtown businesses. All the people downtown were all in favor of that. And we say, if there's going to be a bike lane, it should be in the boulevard next to the sidewalk and not in the street. That way we can have parking and, and bike lane. If necessary, I'll move the bike lane somewhere else. But the downtown store owners were furious about this idea. So I just made two copies because I didn't have enough people to do everyone. But there's just a, some of the businesses. And this, this is just a, Signatures, and this is what I showed them when I found that there had been a motion made without knowing about it to take away the parking and then just some of the residents, but you know, I said uh, the people that were totally against it and want to keep our parking and put the bike lanes in the sidewalk. Okay, anything else? Um, they covered it, but you got 16 seconds. Okay, I'm hold it. I saw Thank that. you. <laughs> I'm yes. Catherine Cross, and I live at 708 Vine Street. And after the public works meeting last week, I uh, volunteered to take a survey of the residents of Vine Street. And, and I hope all of you have gotten a copy of that in my summary. That was emailed today to the council. And I'd just like to, for the 
audience here summarize it, that I found 44 addresses either on Vine Street or property that was corner, corner property that had addresses on cross streets had property on Vine Street. 42 of those were occupied. And of those 42, I got 31 responses, one from each household. And of the 31, seven favored keeping parking lanes on the north side, which was 22.58%. 22 favored a two-year trial period of bike lanes, 70.96%. And two were neutral, um, being okay with either option, and that was 6.45%. And to add to that, I didn't actually ask people why, why they were for whichever option, but in collecting this, uh, these opinions, I did get comments the most mentioned most often was the speed on Vine Street, the, both east and west, and the speed of the traffic going west over the 9th Street intersection was the worst case and the people who have driveways, have a, especially if they have to back out onto Vine Street, have a real heck of a time with um, the, uh, the speed of the traffic and the um, sight lines. Can you wrap it up, please? Okay. That's um, the only other thing that people were really uh, pleased to be asked what their opinion was. So thank, thank you. you. Diane Wetstein, 719 Vine Street. Um, this is my third or fourth trip to the podium stating these same things, but since you're all here and not all of you were at the various public works meetings, and I'll state those points again. On the 700 block of Vine, we the residents came to the first meeting on January 6th seeking clarification in regard to a special uh, possible special assessment for this project as had been discussed by the council and reported in the paper, meaning that we homeowners did not want to be assessed for more than is the current norm um, for a street that everyone in this town uses. Secondly, we came opposed to widening the street, um, and we thought the meeting on the 6th was a listening session to get input from us, but we didn't realize that the council had already approved the plans that you're talking about now. Um, at any rate, we stated our opposition to being specially assessed, and we made points as to why we didn't want it widen, um, widened. And that headline was actually in the Hudson Star Observer on January 6th. Homeowners raised concern about Vine Street project, concern about speed, trees, green space. That's true. We stated that Vine Street did not need to be widened, reconstructed it as is, by virtue of the fact that it narrows, it slows down traffic. We have excessive speed and many near misses as far as accidents go out there. We live at the bottom of the hill, so we witness this daily. It's not safe. We raise concerns in regard to losing trees, losing green space, the boulevards provide, and, um, and then also creating more impervious surface with the proposed wider street, in turn causing more runoff into our protected waterway, the St. Croix River. So we didn't want the street widened. When it appeared at subsequent meetings that the widening of the street was a done deal, then we, we um, this neighborhood group on 700 Vine Street, uh, agreed to bike lanes versus on-street parking as the painted bike lanes might serve as a traffic calming measure. Again, our concerns are speeding and safety on Vine Street. With a smoother, a wider, smoother road, the traffic's going to go down the hill even faster than it does currently. Um, so perhaps those painted bite lanes could calm some of that traffic. Also, we have better sight lines. There aren't cars parked then, you know, blocking. It's hard to turn out onto Vine from 8th, for example. You had your two minutes, but I'd let you yeah, I'm finish almost, up. I'm and almost if done. there's somebody else that I didn't give enough yeah, time Yeah, I'm for. almost done. Okay. So, um, so what I'm saying is we're not for or against um, parking. We're not for or against bike lanes. We just want a safe street. Um, we didn't want it widened, but since it's going to be, we look at this um, as the bike lanes is being giving us the safest street out there on Vine Street. So that's kind of what we're in agreement with. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Peg Scott, and I live at 624 4th Street. We're on the corner of 4th and Vine. Um, I just wanted to say being a biker myself and working in St. Paul and having access to Summit Avenue, that if you're going to widen the street and you're contemplating bike lanes, 
you have to do it all at the same time. And I would just implore you to get it right, you know, whether we agree to pay for it or not pay for it or be assessed. We only want to do it once. We are a progressive city, and bike lanes are, I think, necessities in cities of today. But we want to be accurate in creating those and where we create them. And to, you know, I don't know your name, but, you know, like you said, you need to get more information. So if you're going to marry the two together, marry it very well and do it once and do it right. That's all. Thank you. Marcus Vickery, 816 uh, Vine Street. Um, I just have one concern to bring, and that's that as a um, property owner, I'm in a unique situation in that my property is situated such that the only legal parking I have is on the street. Now, I have a neighbor who allows me to use her easement um, to access the back of my property. Were that not to be so, I would not be able to park in behind my house. Now, if I were to go to sell my house and there weren't parking on the street, I'd have a really, really hard time selling that house. Um, that said, uh, I've been a cyclist my whole life and have ridden bikes in many towns. Um, so I definitely like the idea of bike lanes, but I think um, it's unfair to take parking away from property owners who need it for their homes. What's your address again? 816 Vine Street. Thank you. Hi, Aaron. Hanson, 716 Vine Street. I really appreciate the council's considered and measured approach to this, and they're listening to the public and what they want to do. I think you have the opportunity to do something that's truly inspirational and unique by having a bike lane as a way of transiting the city which we don't presently have. And I think this is a great opportunity for you to do that. I think that the considerations of the downtown owners with regarding to parking, certainly uh, this residential neighborhood should not be bastardized into being a parking ramp for downtown. That's an issue that you've been struggling with. It's a really difficult issue. I see it having no relevance to this issue here, and I don't think it should be part of the council's consideration. I look forward to your decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ron Scott, 624 4th Street. Um, one thing, you know, you guys, um, you know, you're our representatives here, and most of these people, I'm sure they're really disappointed in paying this assessment. You know, they're not, a, you know, I, I know what you guys are trying to do and get this going, and, but, you know, Vine Street is a, a main route. And, and, it, and you're having us as uh, the residents pay for this. And I have a hard time with that because you have the fire department going, it's a main, main route going through there. And, um, and I don't think you guys are sure exactly how this is going, we're seeing it here. And thank you, John, for pulling that proposal because you guys don't know what's really going on yet. So like my wife came up here, if you're gonna do it, get it right. And, and uh, you know, I think I'm speaking for most of these people here, you know, with this assessment, you know, this is our money that you guys are going to take out of our pockets to do it. So, you know, at least consider that. You know, you're, you're supposed to serve us. Thank you. My name is Lauren Faust. I'm 711 Vine Street. And speaking to the assessment, I pulled out an appraisal from 2004. And I'm right on Vine Street. And my house was appraised against um, homes that are on 6th Street. And I took a $3,000 hit because I'm on Vine Street, and traffic is such an, such an influence. And so to be assessed, when I lose that value in my home because of the very street that I live on, um, yeah, the assessment, that, that is painful. It, it is painful for a street that everybody uses, except for those of us that live on Vine Street for the most part. We use it as a cross street, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mike Ferguson. I live on 811 Vine Street, right in between 8th and 9th Street. Uh, I'm opposed against the bike path. Uh, I'm going to speak for the two neighbors that I have that cannot be here. It's for David Trebrish, which lives at 815 Vine Street, and for Tom Carlsgaard that lives at 805 Vine Street. I'm um, going to keep it short. I'm just going to read an email from David Trebrish that he sent to the city because it is 
the same views that I have, and it's, it's pretty well written. As a Hudson resident, I have concerns regarding the possible bike lane on the north side of Vine Street. I live at 815 with the only driveway access from Vine Street, along with two other driveways at 811 and 805. These two have limited visibility as it is. Because of automobiles approaching the hill, when bikes descend Vine on our block, they often move at great speed because of the steep downhill grade. You've probably noticed that bikers going up Vine often have to walk their bikes. When backing onto Vine, we all know it is heavily traveled. We would need to watch for speeding bikes as well as the automobiles. I bike almost every day during the summer months myself and am no stranger to cross bike, stranger to crossing bike lanes to turn onto a street. The problem here is the high rate of speed bikers reach when descending our hill and then necessity to back out of our driveways onto a heavily traveled street. I think we would be inviting a potentially serious accident with a bike lane on the north side of Vine. And I just also want to add that the three driveways that, that we have that back on the Vine are 100% of the residential driveways all the way up to what, 6th and then you have another one on the corner. So we're a majority of people that have to back on the vine on a daily basis. I leave for work every day at 5.30 in the morning and I still have to look pretty good because there are cars coming down. I see a lot of uh, the volunteer firefighters or firefighters going down that road. It's, it's pretty fast. I would hate to think that we're going to use a bike lane to slow down traffic. You know, I mean, it's, you're going to use the, the people. Well, it's, going to be, it's not going to be a sign that somebody's going to run over. It's going to be a person in the bike lane. Why cushion the road with uh, pedestrians on bikes? All the bike traffic up that hill besides experienced bikers, I see kids walking their bikes. Do you really want kids leaving the school, gaining 30 miles an hour going down that in an open road that is designated for bikes? Bikes always have the right of way. It's hard to stop going down there. I've gone downtown many times on my bike. It's not something that you're not using your brakes a bunch of the time, especially if you're going to be able to yield to cross traffic. Can you wrap it up? I gave you a little extra time because right. you had Thank three you. people. Thank you. Can I double dip? I Hang on, just a second. Just a second. We'll let you come back. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, Marion Weber, um, uh, 604 Grandview Drive. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in bicycling. I'm uh, president of a bicycle non-profit bicycle organization and the people in kind of response to the last talker everyone's walking and driving and biking down Vine Street now uh, the bike lanes would be an effort to make it safer for people to do that uh, everyone acknowledges this if, uh, given a perfect world that wouldn't be where you would choose to ride a bike people are choosing to ride a bike there I ride my bike there and um, uh, so that's just kind of what I wanted to say about that. Thank you. You're on. Real quick. Yep. Uh, not in this town, but in my hometown of Athens, Georgia, which is a huge cycling town. I actually have been in a bike car accident where I was the person on the bike on a main thoroughfare where the bike uh, uh, car turned in front of me and hit the car. That's anecdotal regardless. Uh, I don't see these issues as mutually exclusive parking versus bike lanes. I think having bike lanes is an excellent idea. Somebody suggested at uh, one of the other meetings I went to that, that a bike lane be on Wisconsin. Um, why do the bike lanes have to be on Vine? That's the question I'm asking. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Scott Jorgensen, 309 Vine Street, Pastor First Baptist Church, 311 Vine Street. Uh, we were initially in favor of widening from 3rd to 4th, um, but in light of the new information tonight and the uh, replacement of the sidewalks, uh, I would have to bring that back to, my, to, to the congregation. Uh, thank you for that. Again, our whole um, premise for uh, me in favor of that was for the safety of the people that are parking there on the north side of between 3rd and 4th. So now with that being uh, not widened, I would just say uh, vote in favor for safety. Um, uh, if, if it's uh, 
the, the wisdom and the understanding of those who've investigated the biking stuff, if having a bike lane provides a safer, safer environment, uh, then by all means. It's, it seems a, a little problematic now if you remove the parking from 4th to 9th. Now you've got a transition at 4th. Uh, it, it just seems a little convoluted to me. So personally, not on behalf of First Baptist Church, but I would be in favor of just keeping the parking on the north side if it makes sense to, to put a stripe or, or a common access for bikes and uh, uh, vehicles, like you were thinking from third to fourth, then do that from, from third all the way to ninth. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Lauren Foss, have Lemon Vine. Here's a uh, suggestion. Maybe just, we hate the idea of it being, the street being widened, but widen it and just do the parking that you have now. Just, we don't park there anyway, and it's parking from, uh, March 16th until November 14th, why don't you just keep it that way, you know? Unfortunately, widen the street if you must, but um, Chief Jensen, Jensen mentioned the way it is now without widening it, you know, not having the parking in the winter, it's still safe. There's enough room for the emergency vehicles to pass through uh, when there's no parking with the snow plows and the snow piles and stuff. So, I mean, that's a thought too, not to widen it and keep it as it is. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure, why don't you come up to the microphone? Oh, you should come up to the microphone. Pat Colton again. If you want to have some goodwill with your downtown businesses, they would be very happy if you would expand the parking for year round because then they actually feel like they finally are getting something. Because that is just a big issue with them. And they also, as a big comp they put in there, is they would love to see a parking ramp built behind the firehouse there on the hill. Thank you. Anyone else? What's the, what's the term? Either speak now or forever hold your peace? <laughs> That's not just, you can still. But yeah, if, if, if once we start deliberation or how we're gonna do this, we're not gonna take any more comments from the, from the public. So now is your chance. Does that seem reasonable for everyone? Okay. Anyone else? Going, going, gone. Okay. Anybody have any, uh, I know everybody has some thoughts on this. So the issue comes in basically what we've already approved. Well, you know what, uh, Mr. Sifko? Well, let's just, let's see if there's any, any other comments, but I think we out of here. I think we have our engineering firm here too. Um, can, can we get some th your thoughts? On this? <coughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Let's have yes. Please come up. Is the engineer from Mink here too? Uh, he left. He's here. <laughs> um, Did yeah. he leave already? Uh, he wanted out of here. <laughs> Steve Heff from Bolton Mink is yep. here. Uh, he is the lead person, the design engineer on the project. He will be the one signing the plans, final plans and specifications. I kind of wondered what I should even say here tonight. Um, so <laughs> maybe what I'll do is just a quick recap of, of, of a couple of thoughts. Um, as I look at the issue sheet, and John referenced the number of meetings starting with the July, uh, excuse me, January 6th public informational meeting, there's been three public works committee meetings since then. This is the second city council meeting since January 6th that this topic has been discussed. There's been various motions. Um, I guess. In summary, we have a lot of ideas coming from a lot of different areas. Uh, we have people that are for bikes. We have people that are against bike lanes. Obviously, to construct bike lanes, parking comes into the equation immediately. We have people that are in favor of parking. We have people that are not in favor of parking. What I would like to throw out is, if we were to look at bikeways, this is something that we, I think, has been brought up in a couple, in one or more of the 
six, seven, or eight meetings I referred to, but if we look at bikeways, somebody threw out a concept of a bikeway should go from point A to point B. We have never, and at least unless there's something I'm missing, we have never identified point A and point B. If we look at the motions, we've had various things that are east and west of 4th Street. We've talked about 3rd to 4th, maybe knocking out the parking. I don't recall too many discussions that even talked about what we do from 2nd to 3rd. So if you look at the bike path, what are, what, what are we trying to accomplish if we change the design to put in a bike path? Where is point A and where is point B? One person suggested on the east side, it would be Wisconsin Street because it's the high school and Wisconsin Street currently has bike lanes. Potentially that could be the east end. On the west end, logically, probably is the park, but getting across 2nd Street and getting from 2nd Street to the park has some challenges. Has some challenges even crossing 1st Street to get from the east side of the intersection to the west side, which is the beach parking lot. There's a lot of turning movements, people heading down to the beach, they're all going north or south. There's some challenges there as well. In looking at the bike path, one of the questions has always been in my mind, what do we do at 9th Street? 9th Street is the east end of our project. If we put in bike lanes, the biker heading up the hill to the east crosses 9th Street and now is in a traveled lane with a car. We also have a four foot center line offset. In other words, the existing center line of the road would shuffle over four feet. I know I've, I've heard the, the term sharrows where the biker and the car share the lane. But getting back to what do we do with a bike lane? I've heard the county has potentially had discussions about a bike lane and a corridor. One night at home I was looking at cable TV. I guess I must be bored. <laughs> I saw North Hudson. They were talking about bike lanes. In some of those discussions were the river crossing. Some of those discussions were talking about going from a bike with a bike going from Stillwater to Ellsworth. I've heard of some other coalitions looking at corridors. Some people have mentioned should not be Vine, should be Orange Street, could be some street to the south. If we're, again, so there's a lot of discussions about a corridor and where that thing may or may not, may not be. In looking at, again, 9th Street, the east end of our project, if we were gonna look at bike lanes, to me there should be more of a comprehensive look. And by that I mean, what are we gonna do at 9th Street? Are we going to look at 9th Street to 10th, 11th, 12th, all the way up to Wisconsin Street? What do we have to do to the existing pavement markings from 9th up to Wisconsin Street? Can we remove them and move them over? Does that fit the bike lane scenario? Another question would be, what do the bikes do when they get to Wisconsin Street? Right now you have a protected median and two lanes. One is a leftbound into the high school, one's a right going south on Wisconsin Street. Where would the bikers end up? And then on the same token, if you look on the west end, we've talked about potentially building bike lanes to 4th Street or maybe 3rd Street. What happens on that end? How do we get them to this fictitious point B I refer to, and maybe it's the park? Uh, there's other, maybe there's options. Maybe we bring them north and cross, maybe we bring them south. Um, there's things that we haven't looked at. Again, some people are for a certain plan, some people are not. We've not really developed options on either end. And then the second thing I'd just like to throw out is the, the parking discussion. We cannot pick and choose, and this is my opinion, we cannot pick and choose where parking is and where parking is banned. We have to look at it, in my view, the big picture of the point A to point B concept and what's happening in that whole stretch, including what's happening from 9th up to the high school. What are we doing with parking there? Um, and again, I'm not trying to complicate the issue. Um, we have a difficult problem, uh, project. It's gonna be very challenging. Uh, we're gonna have an assessment hearing here March 7th. We plan on having another public informational meeting 
probably three weeks after that, maybe four weeks after that, to go through with the public more detailed construction items, phasing, scheduling, all those types of things. The one thing, and I've said this before, and again, so we've kind of gotten the parking, which I've heard pros, I've heard cons. I don't know what the council wants to do, but right now the plan is set up to bid. And if we build what's currently in the plan, we are not throwing away bike lanes for the rest of time. If next year one of these studies was done, or two years from now, we could come back and sandblast the existing pavement markings and put in the bike lanes. I'm a little leery of putting in bike lanes, and I'm frankly, I'm not 100% clear what we would, in looking through these motions, I'm not sure where we would start, where we would stop, because there's been... Well, there is no motion so, right now, so... So those are a few thoughts that I had on bike lanes in general, and okay. parking, and parking ban, and... Uh, and as Steve, again, Steve Heff is here from uh, Bolton and Mink, and he's the design engineer on the project. Steve, do you have anything you want to add? I don't know how I could top that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just right now, the way it's designed, it's 36 feet. Parking would go back in unless the council changes it the way it is today, because I have not heard that we're going to get rid of the parking. It, that was kicked around, but was there an actual motion to get rid of the seasonal parking between 4th and 9th? No. I no. don't think so. The, the council, there hasn't been, I don't believe. The oh. council directed us to design a 36-foot wide road, which gives the council or the city the flexibility to put in parking or put in lanes on the side if there is no parking. Right now, if we have parking, we're setting it up for two 12-foot lanes, nine-foot parking, and then two feet of gutter over on the side, other, other side. So um, it's up to the council. So. I have a question for you. Well, I have two questions. First of all, a lot of people, and I think it's correct, have concerns about people speeding down Vine Street. Is it? Is there a difference between having parking versus bike lanes that makes it less likely that people will speed? The, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the question is, if, if you have parking along the side of the street, it narrows up the corridor, or narrows up the feeling and normally people do slow down. If you paint the fog line to identify the lane width, that slows people down too, depending on how wide you paint it. We've had 13 feet, 12 feet, 11 feet kicked around here. Um, right now, the standard lane width is 12 feet. That ha you know, it has gone to 11 sometimes, but normally with six, seven thousand cars, the bus that's the major bus route for two schools, actually three. Um, so we, we are looking at 12 feet for the lane width. The, the fog line, I call it the fog line, the lane identification markings slows people down. It does work. that answer your question, Tom? It does. Now my second question is, you're the one that's going to have to sign off on this, correct? Correct. As an engineer? So I assume that you're not going to sign off on something that you don't think is a safe design. Is that a fair statement? That's a very fair statement. <laughs> okay, so which of the proposals is the best, safest design? <laughs> well, I'm you know, you're the engineer, so I'm so asking. They're both safe. <laughs> Tom brought up the point. It's we're just ending at Ninth Street. If you go up, and measure that. Ninth Street has 12 feet. On the east for an eastbound lane and 22 feet on the other for the parking along where the kids sled but so if we had and I if we designated 12 feet or I think the proposal was 11 feet 5 feet and then the two feet of gutter coming eastbound when you get to ninth there's no more five feet uh, I bike lane, if you want to say that. 
right now we weren't painting bikes, bike lanes. We were painting uh, traffic lanes. And then there's a spot between the edge of the traffic lane and the lip of the gutter. So. Well, you did a pretty good job of, <laughs> of kind of dodging the question, but it was heartful. I, th I think Tom hit it. You know, we were, what, what we've done isn't backing the council into something that they'll regret later that we can't change it. With 36 feet of width, that gives us sure. flexibility. So, Tom, did you want to say something else? or you did, well, I, I, I saw you come r rushing up. Maybe I shouldn't, but maybe to... To try to answer your question a little bit more clear, this isn't a this. Now he pulls. This something. isn't <laughs> that this is safe and this is not, or vice versa. I feel both of these are safe. Where we're at is starting and stopping one of these and building the other one. That's my personal opinion. Um, so I, again, is one 52% safe better than that one? I don't think we can split hairs to that effect, but from a safety perspective, I think both of those are safe roadway designs. But where are we going? The point A, point B thing again. Okay. Some sure. of the questions that haven't been answered on either end. That's, well, All right. that, that helps you out a little bit on the safety issue. Yep. <clears throat> Well, we weren't going to allow any other comment after, once we started deliberating, but go ahead. Okay, Marion Weber, <laughs> 0604 Grand View Drive. I've uh, done a lot of research on this. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of information available on being able to do bike lanes and to make them as safe as possible. Actually, the beginning and the end of this is, is Carmichael Road and, and the river. So. Okay, thank you. So folks, uh, our decision, there's going to be people that aren't going to be happy with whatever we do here tonight. Kind of works that way, doesn't it? It always does. <laughs> um, and I have uh, sat there for many of these meetings and gone back and forth and in our last meeting, and I, I did want to at least bring this forward because who said it, uh, Peg, yeah, let's not mess it up, right? Let's get it right. And we're really trying, I've been really trying yep. to, you know, dial it in. Uh, and. What it came down to me, kind of, and I it surprised myself, is that if if you can't prove the what's the better choice, then well, what's the worse choice or the choice not as good? And the only and Jim may disagree, but um, the what it came down to, to is that one creates more hardship than the other, and removing parking is the option that creates one or two or three hardships. Whereas I can bike down other streets, and I, I know you can still bike on Vine Street. That's not really the issue, but removing parking creates a hardship for some people on Vine Street, and I, I do understand that. So that kind of tipped it for me. I can't say the same about the bike lane, although I'd, be, I'd rather have the bike lanes personally. Um, it just seems like that's the one kind of tipping factor that I came upon. So okay, I'd like to interject that on top of the other meetings that. Tom Sisko, uh, there was two public safety meetings that were that took place, right. and with the exception of one or two of the residents on Vine Street, no one showed up to talk about those safety issues. But we took it upon ourselves to address those safety issues, and we will continue to do so, do so through the design phase of Vine Street. I'm gonna, I agree with you, John. This parking needs to stay. I don't. I think the biking is slowing down our pro, our progress on this Vine Street project that needs to be done, that we've identified almost 10 years ago, and we can't we can't stop for this issue. There are alternatives to the biking lanes, but to put a hardship on the folks that live there, I'm not in agreement with. I'm I'm in agreement with the original design, but I will not approve anything that takes away the parking. I think the original design had the parking in it, I believe. Jim. I think uh, relative to the hardship, and, and this is a hard thing to say, but there's only been one person who actually has a hardship as a result of this, and that's uh, Marcus, because he does not have adequate parking. Everybody else has 
the access that they're already using. They don't use Vine Street or they have driveways. So that's that's the hardship. Just just come on, we're not gonna we're not gonna have comment from the audience. We're gonna talk right now. That, that's okay. what's that's come what's on, been folks. stated is that the issues are only one person has said I don't have a parking space if I do, that happens. You've talked about other hey, issues. Would you please be quiet so we can contact the Pat? Okay, please. Thank you. So I may be mistaken in that, but this is a testimony that's been presented. Yep. One person has a what I would classify as a hardship. Um, the safety issues that we're, we're actually increasing the risk of accidents because we're by widening the street, we're increasing the relative speed that people see. 12 foot versus 11 foot is a lot different. So we really have to take, we really have to do something to address that. We can't have, uh, and it's it's going to have a 12 foot lane on one side, and then for four or five blocks, you're going to have what a 20, what's a 21 foot lane, because there's no parking on Vine. You know, very very few people park on Vine. I I drive that street four or five times a day, and very few people park on Vine from fourth to ninth. So it's a, it's an occasional thing. And for half this half the year, they they're not allowed to park there. So that's that just increases the speed coming down there. Every you can find a lot of studies show you increase the width of the street, the speed goes up. You decrease the width of the street, speed goes down. Because that's not, in my mind, not even contestable. But so we have to if we're if we're not going to do the bike lanes, and and I can see there are issues that say. And I appreciate maybe we need to step back and take a look at the whole picture and, and devise that. Uh, I hear talk about alternatives, but Wisconsin is not an alternative because that ends at the top of a hill and you have no way of really safely getting down. You're coming down steeper roads, worse roads than that. Orange Street has five or six stop signs, two jogs in the road, and a yield sign. So, you know, that's not conducive to bicycling at all. Don't, you know, put putting stop signs in front of bicyclists is not going to make them use that route. They will go somewhere else. So they're really, Vine Street is the only through street from there to Cooley Road. So don't, don't be confused by thinking there are other routes. There are not other routes that really work for bicyclists. They're, you're going to have them running stop signs and they'll be running across traffic that has a right of way. So I, th I think you actually increase the danger. But we need to stop and look at, step back, take a look at it, um, get some people that can, that have experience in, de in uh, um, uh, designing ways that go through. And don't take this personally, Tom, or, or, or but Steve, but there are, there are people in our area who have years of experience and who go around the nation, go around the world, designing bikeways and some of it's free so I, I think we need to we need to get all these people together get all the interest in there and try to come up with a solution uh, it's not it's not working to uh, push one way or the other and and Tom mentioned that if we're careful about the design we still leave ourselves open to having bike lanes at a future time but we still gonna, we're always going to have the parking issue but uh, and the third last point I'd like to make is the parking that goes downtown, or the, the parking that um, might affect downtown does not occur on Vine Street, maybe twice a year. That's when the people are going down to the fireworks and that's when they're here for the parade. And that, those are the times when Vine Street has, from 4th to 9th, has parking on it. Very little impact on downtown. So it's not a day-to-day -day thing, it's not weekly, it's two, two days out of the year that, that conceivably would have an effect. So I, I really don't, I understand they're, they're upset about parking, we need it. And so I think the fl somebody says parking, the flag goes up. And uh, that's not, a, that's, that's, to me, not a viable consideration at this point. But we need to step back and uh, empower a group of to, to look at this and, and come up with the best solution. We still need to get, be able to get through Hudson east to west on bicycles.
Okay. Anyone else have anything to say? I just have three points. First, I agree with John. Probably the hardship factor is a big one for me. And um, second is uh, I think it's it should be whatever motion we make that it's it should be mandatory that a council two years from now takes a look at it. If we go with parking, that they have to take a look at it to see if bike lanes are uh, a better choice at that time. And third is that we really need to have realistic data about speeds after this road is built to uh, determine if there's a way to make it safer or that people uh, travel at a slower rate of speed. And uh, we haven't talked about these different pedestrian crossings that we uh, talked about at other times. But at this point, I guess I'd, for the reasons that I've stated, I would go with the, with the parking and then, but it has to be revisited uh, okay. two years from now. Okay, anyone else? Mr. Mayor, are we on 13C? We are on 13B. B. Uh, the issue that uh, we have here, both of the uh, <coughs> public works recommendation have been withdrawn. So, so we, I would say if there's no motion to do something different, <coughs> the plans and specs you approved back in whenever that November. was are still correct, are still in effect. It's mm -hmm. at 36 feet wide and with parking seasonal with parking. the existing parking yeah. correct because yeah. nothing's been so done different 13 b is if you want to make any changes to that and then 13 c would be approving either the original you approved or mm -hmm. what so what's your what's your uh is that clear that's, so, well that's what i'm asking yeah. let's move to, are we just are we on c we can move to see if, if that's what the uh, council desires have you guys talked about any uh you know speed signs mm -hmm. on, public safety yes we've talked about the street speed signs we've also talked about the uh, solar yellow light flashing yep, or, which the kids are available to push that button to cross <laughs> cool. and then of course pavement markings all with the intent to follow the design and the phase and the construction of the project excellent um, with that, I would move that we approve the final plans and specs for Vine Seed Project and then authorize for uh, bids. Item C? Yes. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any other discussion? I would suggest that we add the amendment to, uh, to include the point that Tom made is that we look at this again in one to two years, that we study the effect of or the, the speed of this thing, and that we look at a resource or a, a point or a, a group that will take a look at how we're going to make this happen what's the best way to make this happen i know what our attorney's going to say well i'm just going to this <laughs> is just about future. approval can't, can't, of final can't. plans and specs yep and that's what's on well the he's agenda. trying to amend the motion and he has a right to do that i think um but you're talking about reviewing the traffic pattern on vine street that's really You're separate saying, from <coughs> approval of final plans. So we're going to bring this up at a different time. Yeah, I think so. All right. Is that okay, Tom or J Jim? Is that okay with you? Yep. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other comments? Looking forward to having a new Vine Street. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then on March 7th, we'll get the pleasure of doing the assessment hearing. So um, awesome. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Uh, new business, uh, discussion and possible action on resolution 316, Wisconsin Department of Transportation, 2006. Excuse me. 2016, 2020 transportation alternative to this program, TPA award cycle. Mr. Sifko. Uh, thank you. Uh, basically, the item before you is, as stated there, um, we have, the city has had two studies done, one in 2010 and one in 2015, to inspect and do a report on potential repairs needed to the Walnut Street Bridge, which is the same as the Dyke Road. Uh, both of those recommended uh, repairs, the total estimated project cost is just over $446,000 at this time. We're looking at trying to secure funding through a couple of different grant programs. The city has already submitted for a transportation alternative program, TAP grant. Uh, 
If successful, we would uh, potentially get 80% reimbursement towards that 446,000. Awesome. We also anticipate later this spring applying for another grant, uh, Knowles Nelson Stewardship Program, which is through the DNR, administered through them. Uh, we, we would hope to try to apply that towards our 20%. The resolution that's attached is part of the uh, application process. We have until April 1st to get it to the DOT. And basically it's a resolution of support uh, indicating that the city is aware of the general terms, which is an 80% reimbursement. The city would be on the, uh, responsible for 20%. And um, with that, I guess I would recommend, <laughs> this, uh, staff recommendation is to approve resolution 316, which is a uh, resolution of support. Is there a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call. Hoggett? Yes. Alms? Yes. Hall? Yes. Weber? Yes. Morissette? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Is there a motion to approve resolution 3 16? So moved. Sorry. Is there a second. You got a second? Um, this will allow us to take the largest truck available on that bridge. Is that right, Tom? Uh, I'm not sure what the definition of largest <laughs> truck available is. This is, but uh, it's for necessary repairs, to, uh, mostly to the bridge deck and sidewalk. Okay, I'm being facetious. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, communications from the mayor. First thing I'd like to rec uh, have all the citizens of Hudson, April 5th, there's a referendum on the school bond uh, for our new, for a school proposed school changes. And I want the dates, uh, February 22nd, which is tonight. Uh, that's at the FIP Center, but March 3rd from 6.30 to 9 at the middle school at the school media center. And on March 24th from 6.30 to 9 at the Hudson High School. And again, be, be informed, go to these presentations, see what's going on about the proposed school referendum. Um, I had one other thing and I can't remember what it was. So anything from future agenda items? Council members, anything? Communication? I just wanted to thank everybody for all the time they've spent uh, coming to these meetings and talking about Vine Street. It's okay. feel like we got input, so. Anyone else? Uh, city attorney. Oh. City staff, city administrator. If not, I will, oh, we don't need to go 18. We've, we're done with that. So I will enter uh, a motion, entertain a motion for adjournment. So, so moved. moved. Is there a second? <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.